The war in Abkhazia from 1992 to 1993 was fought between Georgian government forces for the most part, and Abkhaz separatist forces, Soviet Russian government armed forces and North Caucasian militants. Ethnic Georgians who lived in Abkhazia fought largely on the side of Georgian government forces. Ethnic Armenians and Russians within Abkhazia's population largely supported the Abkhazians, and many fought on their side. The separatists received support from thousands of North Caucasus and Cossack militants and from the Russian Federation forces stationed in and near Abkhazia. The handling of this conflict was aggravated by the civil strife in Georgia proper between the supporters of the ousted Georgian president, Z. Vyad Gamsakhurdia, in office 1991 1992 and the post coup government headed by Eduard Shevardnadze, as well as by the Georgian Ossetian conflict of 1989 onwards. Significant human rights violations and atrocities were reported on all sides, peaking in the aftermath of the Abakaz capture of Sokomi on 27 September 1993, which according to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe was followed by a large-scale campaign of ethnic cleansing against the ethnic Georgian population. A fact-finding mission dispatched by the UN Secretary-General in October 1993 reported numerous and serious human rights violations committed both by Abkhazians and by Georgians. From 13,000 to 20,000 ethnic Georgians and approximately 3,000 Abkhaz have been reported killed, more than 250,000 Georgians became internally displaced or refugees and 2,000 are considered missing. The war heavily affected post-Soviet Georgia, which suffered considerable financial, human and psychological damage. The fighting and subsequent continued sporadic conflict have devastated Abkhazia. <laughs> war The situation in the Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic of Abkhazia had been tense since the end of the 1980s when the anti-Soviet, Georgian opposition began demanding independence from the Soviet Union. In March 1989, Abkhaz nationalists demanded in the Liney Declaration the official establishment of a separate Soviet Socialist Republic based on the precedent of the existence of a separate Abkhazian SSR from 1925 to 1931, which was associated with the Georgian SSR by a confederative union treaty. The declaration was signed by the rector of the Sokomi University. Ethnic Georgian students of the university announced protests, but these were forbidden by the Georgian government. Nevertheless, the students rallied and were attacked by ethnic Abkhazians. The Georgian anti-Soviet movement was outraged by the event and included the claims of the students against Abkhazian secession into its list of slogans by several thousand Georgian demonstrators in Tbilisi. In response to the protests Soviet troops were dispatched to Tbilisi, resulting in the April 9 tragedy. In the aftermath, the first armed clashes between the representatives of the Abkhazian and Georgian populations took place on 16 to 17 July 1989 in Sokomi. The conflict was sparked by the decision of the Georgian government to convert the Georgian sector of Sokomi State University into a branch of Tbilisi State University. Abkhazians vehemently opposed to the new university, saw it as an instrument to extend Georgian dominance. Although the USSR Supreme Soviet concluded that the Georgian government had no legal right to authorize the new university, an entrance exam was scheduled for 15 July. The resulting civil unrest quickly turned into militarized clashes that, according to official accounts, resulted in 18 deaths and at least 448 wounded, 302 of whom were Georgian. In response, Interior Ministry troops were deployed to quell the unrest. By July 1990, since neither side had felt strong enough to force the issue militarily, Georgian Abkhaz antagonisms became largely relegated to the legislatures, demarcating Abkhazia as a legal contest, a war of laws, until armed hostilities broke out in August 1992. During that time, the government of the Soviet Union had very few options to prevent inter-ethnic conflicts, being itself on the verge of collapse. Ethnic allocations, or quotas, were introduced prior to the 1991 elections to the Supreme Soviet of Abkhazia, resulting in a composition that did not accurately reflect the ethnicity of the constituent population. Thus, of 65 seats, the Abkhazians 17% of the population gained 28, Georgians 45%, 26, with the remaining 11 being divided amongst other groupings Armenians, Russians, the latter comprising 33% of the population. Topic. 
Georgian Offensive In June 1992 the tensions over autonomy approached a critical stage, when Abakaz militants attacked the government buildings in Sokomi. On 23 July 1992, the Abkhazian government proclaimed the independence of the region, though this was not internationally recognized. On 14 August 1992, Georgian police and National Guard units were dispatched to restore government control over Abkhazia. The ranks of Georgian troops were filled partially by emptying the jails, as some of the inmates were released on the condition that they fight in Abkhazia. Fighting broke out the same day. On 18 August 1992, the separatist government fled from Sokomi to Gudauta. Georgian government forces subsequently captured large parts of Abkhazia. On the 22nd of August 1992, the Confederation of Mountain Peoples of the Caucasus published a decree of its president Musa Shanabov and the chairman of the parliament Isuf Soslanbekov, as there is no other way to withdraw Georgian occupants' army from the territory of the sovereign Abkhazia and in order to implement the resolution of the 10th session of the CMPC, we order All headquarters of the Confederation have to dispatch volunteers to the territory of Abkhazia to crush the aggressor militarily. All military formations of the Confederation have to conduct military actions against any forces who oppose them and try to reach the territory of Abkhazia by any method. To announce Tbilisi as a zone of disaster. At that use all methods, including terrorist acts. To declare all people of Georgian ethnicity on the territory of Confederation as hostages. All type of cargoes directed to Georgia shall be detained. On 25 August, Georgi Karkarashvili, the Georgian military commander, announced via television that the Georgian forces would not take any POWs. He promised that no harm would be done to peaceful residents of Abkhazia and that peace talks would be conducted. He warned separatists that if the peace talks wouldn't succeed and if 100,000 Georgians were killed, that the remaining 97,000 ethnic Abkhaz, who supported Ardzinba would perish. Karkarashvili later allegedly threatened the Abakaz politician, Vladislav Ardzinba, not to take any actions that would leave the Abakaz nation without descendants and thus placed the responsibility for future deaths on Ardzinba personally. Later, his speech was used by the separatists as propaganda and to justify their own actions. Significant ethnic cleansing accompanied by atrocities occurred on both sides with Abkhazians displaced from Georgian held territory and vice versa. Many human rights abuses, principally looting, pillage and other outlaw acts, along with hostage-taking and other violations of humanitarian law, were committed by all sides throughout Abkhazia. On 26 August armed Chechens fighting for Abkhazia captured Valery Malik from Eshira, just because he expressed his sympathy to Georgians. On the same day they raped Georgian teenagers, and along with the Abakaz militants, committed atrocities against Georgian civilians in the village of Orjan Akidza. After taking Sokomi, Georgian forces including Makadrioni paramilitaries engaged in vicious, ethnically based pillage, looting, assault and murder. In addition to the looting, Abakaz cultural monuments were destroyed in a manner that, according to some reports, suggests deliberate targeting. University buildings were sacked and museums and other cultural collections broken up. The irreplaceable Abakaz National Archives were burned by Georgian troops. Reportedly, local firefighters didn't attempt to douse the blaze. A family of Abakaz refugees from Sokomi claimed that drunken Georgian troops broke into their apartment firing automatic weapons, and telling them, to leave Sokomi forever, because Sokomi is Georgian. According to the family, the Georgian soldiers stole jewelry, assaulted the husband, and then threw them all out into the street. The same witnesses reported seeing dead Abakaz civilians, including women and elderly people, scattered in the streets, even though the fighting had ended days before. At the end of this stage of the conflict, the Georgian army had taken most of Abkhazia. Pockets of Abakaz forces were besieged in parts of Ochamshira district and TK Varcheli, while in Gudauta they were pinched between Georgian troops in Gagra and Sokomi. <laughs> <laughs> Fall of Gagra On 3 September 1992, a ceasefire was negotiated in Moscow. According to the agreement, Georgian forces were obliged to withdraw from Gagra district. The Georgian side carried out the implementation of the agreement and left its positions. As a result, the local Georgian population of Gagra remained defenseless. The ceasefire was soon violated by the Abakaz side. 
Thousands of volunteer paramilitaries, mainly Chechens and Cossacks from the Militarized Confederation of Mountain Peoples of the Caucasus CMPC and the Abakaz military, equipped with T-72 tanks, BM-21 Grad rocket launchers, Suhoi Su-25 attack planes, and helicopters. Georgia accused Russia of supplying this equipment, as it had not been previously used by the Abakaz. Abakaz and CMPC forces attacked the town of Gagra on 1 October. The small Georgian force remaining in the town briefly defended Gagra before retreating, then regrouped and recaptured the town. The Abakaz and CMPC forces reconsolidated and launched another attack, capturing Gagra on 2 October. The Russian Navy began to blockade the seaport near Gagra. The naval vessels, SKP Bezukorizneni, KIL-25, BTH-38, BM-66, Golovin, Landing 345, Aviation 529, Su-25, Su-27, Mi and Anti-Aircraft 643. Regiments were commanded by the first Deputy Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation, G. Kolesnikov, took part in the occupation of Gagra. The Russian tanker, Don, delivered 420 tons of fuel to separatist-held Gudauta. Thousands of Georgian soldiers and civilians fled north, entering Russia before being transported to Georgia proper. With the Abakaz conquest of Gagra, those who remained were forcibly expelled, and a total of 429 were killed. One Georgian woman recalled watching her husband being tortured and buried alive. Abakaz forces, largely supported by the Russian military presence in the region, were now in control over Gagra, Gudauta, where a former Russian military base remains, and TK Varcheli and rapidly approaching Sokomi. The expelled Georgians fled to Russia through the land border or were evacuated by Russian Navy. Topic. Abakaz Offensive on Eshira, Gulripshi, Kamani and Shroma The villages along the Gumista River north and east of Sokomi, such as Akadara, Kamani and Shroma, which were heavily populated by ethnic Georgians became a strategically important area, which enabled motorized units to reach Sokomi, the capital of Abkhazia. After a failed attempt to storm Sokomi from the west, the Abakaz formations and their allies diverted their offensive on the northern and eastern sides of Sokomi. On 2 July 1993 under Russian military directives and naval support, the Abakaz and their Confederation of Mountain Peoples of the Caucasus allies attacked the villages on the Gumista River. The Georgian side didn't expect any offensive from the northern or eastern side of Sokomi district. The Georgian forces suffered heavy losses as many as 500 dead within an hour of the attack and the defensive line around Sokomi was breached by the Abakaz offensive. On 5 July 1993 Abakaz, Armenian Bagramian Battalion, Russian and North Caucasian detachments stormed the villages of Akhalshani, Guma and Shroma of Sokomi district. The residents from the villages were rounded up and massacred. The last offensive took place on 9 July, on the village of Kamani. Kamani was a Svan sub-ethnic group of the Georgian people village, which also included an Orthodox church named after Saint George and convent. After the fall of the village, most of its inhabitants including nuns and priests were killed by Abakaz formations and their allies see Kamani Massacre. <laughs> Bombing and siege of Sokomi In December 1992, Abakaz troops began the shelling of Georgian-held Sokomi. On 4 March 1993, Eduard Shevardnadze, head of the State Council of Georgia, arrived in the capital of the region to take control over the defensive operations in the city. The Minister of Economy, Beslan Kobaka, arrived in Sokomi during the negotiations with Goga Kindrava. According to Kobaka, separatist leader Ardzinba would resign if Shevardnadze would do the same. He didn't approve of the vandalism in Gagra and noted that Abkhazia officially never declared its intention to secede from Georgia. As commander-in-chief of Georgian military forces, Eduard Shevardnadze issued the order, "...measures on the defense of Ochamshira and the Sokomi regions," that stated, "...military formations of different countries are concentrating in Gudauta and Gumista area." 
We have information that those forces have the serious goal of seizing Sokomi and bringing chaos and turmoil to all of Georgia." On 10 February, Shevardnadze appointed Guram Gabaskiria as mayor of Sokomi. Meanwhile, the Georgian parliament made an official declaration blaming Russia for aggression against Georgia and demanding the withdrawal of all Russian military forces from the territory of Abkhazia. On 16 March 1993, at 6 and 9 am the Abakaz and the Confederation forces launched a full-scale attack on Sokomi resulting in mass destruction and heavy casualties among civilians. At 2 a.m. the Abakaz side began artillery bombardments of Georgian positions at the Gumista River and Sokomi. Later in the day several Russian Su-25 planes attacked Sokomi through the morning of the next day. A Russian special detachment led the operation followed by Abakaz fighters and CMPC volunteers. They crossed the river Gumista and took part of Akadara, but Georgian forces successfully stopped their advance. On 14 May, a short-lived ceasefire was signed. On 2 July, Russian Navy ship landed up to 600 Navy descent Russian airborne troops close to the village Tamishi, and engaged in a fierce battle with Georgian troops. The battle was one of the bloodiest in the war, with several hundred killed and wounded on both sides. Despite initial setbacks, the Georgian forces managed to retake their positions. In July, Russian detachments, Abakaz military and CMPC volunteers captured the villages of Akhalshani, Guma and Shroma of the Sokomi region. The fiercest struggle was in the village of Kamani, defended by the Georgian National Guard and battalions of armed Georgian volunteers. After several hours of combat, the village fell. During the following two days, the Abakaz engaged in a campaign of systematic torture, rape, and murder against Kamani's civilian population. Nuns at the church and the covenant were raped and killed in front of the Orthodox priest, and the priests were then taken outside, briefly questioned on the ownership of land in Abkhazia, and murdered. Approximately 120 Georgians were killed in the Kamani massacre. By this time, Abakaz separatists occupied almost all the strategic heights and began to besiege Sokomi. Soon after, the chairman of the Georgian Council of Defense of Abkhazia Tamaz Nadarashvili resigned due to ill health and was succeeded by member of the Georgian parliament Giuli Shartava. On 15 August 1993, Greece carried out a humanitarian operation, Operation Golden Fleece, evacuating 1,015 Greeks who had decided to flee from the war ridden Abkhazia. Similarly, 170 Estonians of Abkhazia were evacuated with three flights by the Republic of Estonia in 1992. According to another source, around 400 Estonians altogether fled to Estonia during the war. Fall of Sokomi Another Russian-mediated ceasefire was agreed in Sochi on 27 July and lasted until 16 September, when Abkhazian separatists violated the agreement citing Georgia's failure to comply with the terms of the agreement and launched a large-scale offensive against Sokomi. During the siege, Russian MiG-29s dropped thermobaric bombs on Georgian residential districts in Sokomi and Georgian villages along the Gumista River. Russian journalist Dmitry Kolodov stayed in Sokomi before it fell, and reported that the city was repeatedly shelled by Russian forces, causing heavy civilian casualties. After a fierce battle, Sokomi fell on 27 September. Shevardnadze appealed to the population of Sokomi by radio, Dear friends, citizens of Sokomi and Georgia. Georgia is facing the most difficult days, especially Sokomi. Separatists and foreign invaders entered into the city. I am proud of your courage. Separatists and opportunists will be judged by history. They do not want Georgians to live in this Georgian city. Many of them dream to repeat the Gagra tragedy here. I know that you understand the challenge we are facing. I know how difficult the situation is. Many people left the city but you remain here for Sokomi and for Georgia. I call on you, citizens of Sokomi, fighters, officers and generals, I understand the difficulties of being in your position now, but we have no right to step back, we all have to hold our ground. We have to fortify the city and save Sokomi. I would like to tell you that all of us, Government of Abkhazia, Cabinet of Ministers, Mr. Giuli Shartava, his colleagues, the city and regional government of Sokomi, are prepared for action. The enemy is aware of our readiness, that's why he is fighting in the most brutal way to destroy our beloved Sokomi. 
I call on you to keep peace, tenacity and self-control. We have to meet the enemy in our streets as they deserve. After the Abakaz capture of the city one of the largest massacres of the war was committed against the remaining and trapped Georgian civilians in the city. Almost all members of the Georgian-backed Abakaz government, who refused to leave the city, including Gurum Gabaskiria, Raoul Eshba and Giuli Shartava, were murdered see Sokomi Massacre. The 1994 U.S. State Department country reports also describe scenes of massive human rights abuse. The Abakaz separatist forces committed widespread atrocities against the Georgian civilian population, killing many women, children and elderly, capturing some as hostages and torturing others. They also killed large numbers of Georgian civilians, who remained behind in Abakaz seized territory. The separatists launched a reign of terror against the majority Georgian population, although other nationalities also suffered. Chechens and other North Caucasians from the Russian Federation reportedly joined local Abakaz troops in the commission of atrocities. Those fleeing Abkhazia made highly credible claims of atrocities, including the killing of civilians without regard for age or sex. Corpses recovered from Abakaz held territory showed signs of extensive torture. The evidence available to Human Rights Watch supports the U.S. State Department's findings. Eduard Shevardnadze left the city narrowly escaping death. Soon Abakaz forces and the Confederates overran the whole territory of Abkhazia, but the Kodori Valley remained in Georgian hands. The total defeat of Georgian forces was accompanied by the ethnic cleansing of the Georgian population. As a result of the war, more than 250,000 people mainly Georgians, also Greeks and others fled from or were forced out of Abkhazia. In September 1994, several reports indicated ethnic clashes between Abakaz and Armenians, a significant part of whom supported the former during the war. Chechen militants of the CMPC later left Abkhazia to take part in the First Chechen War with Russia. In the concluding phase of the Battle of Sokomi, the Abakaz forces shot down three Georgian civilian airliners belonging to Transair Georgia, killing 136 people some of whom were Georgian soldiers, according to Russian sources. Large numbers about 5, of Georgian civilians and servicemen were evacuated by Russian ships during the last hours of the battle. Refugee <inaudible> exodus. <inaudible> <inaudible> After the fall of Sokomi thousands of refugees started to flee Gali, Ochamshira and the Sokomi regions. The plight of refugees became deadly due to snow and cold on the pathway in the Kodori Gorge. Georgian authorities were unable to evacuate all remaining civilians previously many people were evacuated from Sokomi by Russian Navy and via airplanes and cargo ships to the Ukraine. The refugees started to move in through the Kodori Gorge on foot, bypassing the Gali region, which was blocked by advancing Abakaz separatist forces. The crossing of the Kodori Gorge on foot became another death trap for the fleeing IDPs. Most of the people, who didn't survive the crossing, died from freezing cold and starvation. The survivors, who reached the Svan Mountains were attacked and robbed by local criminal groups. One of the survivors recalls the crossing. According to the United States State Department Commission on Foreign Relations and International Relations, 104th Kong, 1st Cess, Country Reports on Human Rights Practices for 1994, at 815, Joint Com. Print 1995, the victorious Abakaz separatists moved through captured towns with prepared lists and addresses of ethnic Georgians, plundered and burned homes and executed designated civilians. Georgians were specifically targeted, but all non-Abakaz suffered. Ethnic cleansing campaign The ethnic cleansing and massacres of Georgians has been officially recognized by the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe OSCE conventions in 1994, 1996 and again in 1997 during the Budapest, Istanbul and Lisbon summits and condemned the perpetrators of war crimes committed during the conflict. 
On 15 May 2008, the UN General Assembly adopted by 14 votes to 11, with 105 abstentions a Resolution A. Res. 62 in which it emphasizes the importance of preserving the property rights of refugees and internally displaced persons from Abkhazia, Georgia, including victims of reported ethnic cleansing, and calls upon all member states to deter persons under their jurisdiction from obtaining property within the territory of Abkhazia, Georgia in violation of the rights of Ritternees, the former resident of Okamchire district, Leila Golatiani, who was taken prisoner by Abakaz separatists, gave the following account of her captivity to the Russian film director Andrei Nekrasov. I lived in Abkhazia 15 years ago, in the small town of Akhaldaba, Okamchire district. Abakaz attacked our village on September 16, 1993. It was impossible to hide anywhere from the bullets which rained down on us. The Russian Cossacks approached me and started to beat me. One of these Russian Cossacks approached me and asked me if I have ever had sex with a Cossack. He grabbed me and tried to rip off my clothes, after which I started to resist but they hit my head on the ground and started to beat me with AK-47 butts. While hitting me all over my body, they yelled, We will kill you, but we will do so slowly. Then they took me to an Abakaz school where they kept Georgian civilian prisoners. There were only Georgians there, women, children and men. There were some women who were pregnant, and children of different ages. The battalion of Cossacks kept coming there regularly. They took young girls and children and raped them systematically. These were children aged 10, 12, 13, and 14. They especially targeted children. One of the girls there was 8 years old. She was taken by different groups of these Cossacks and was raped numerous times. I don't know how she managed to survive after so many rapes but I don't want to mention her name in order to protect her identity. They also took women but later they started to take elderly women. They raped these elderly women in the way which I don't want to go into detail. It was horrific. <laughs> Russia's role in the conflict Although Russia officially claimed neutrality during the war in Abkhazia, Russian military officials and politicians were involved in the conflict in several ways. Russia's warfare market was the main source of weapons for both conflicting sides, it unofficially supported the Abakaz and Georgia side. Finally, Russia carried out some humanitarian operations in Abkhazia. Russian arms used by Georgia were transferred to it under the bilateral agreements with Russia and included main battle tanks, armored personnel carriers, heavy artillery, and heavy mortars. The whole Akhaltik motorized rifle division was turned over to Georgia on the 22nd of September 1992. Some weapons were gained by local raids on Russian army bases in Akhalkalaki, Batumi, Poti and Vaziani by irregular Georgian paramilitary forces. After several attacks, the Soviets declared it would defend its bases with force. Prior to the outbreak of the war, the Abakaz leadership arranged for the redeployment of a Russian airborne battalion from the Baltic states to Sokomi. According to the Russian historian Svetlana Mikhailovna Chervanaya, a number of Russian security servicemen also arrived in Abkhazia as tourists. During that summer, the main load in the preparation of Abkhazian events was given to staff of the former KGB. Almost all of them got appointments in Abkhazia under cover of neutral establishments, which had nothing to do with their real activities. To distract attention, various ruses were resorted to, such as the private exchange of apartments, or the necessity of moving one's place of work to Abkhazia due to a sudden deterioration of health. According to another Russian expert, Yevgeny Kozhokin, director of the Russian Institute of Strategic Studies, prior to the outbreak of hostilities, Abakaz guardsmen had been supplied with weaponry by Russia's 643rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Regiment and a military unit stationed in Gudauta. Ardzinba had major supporters in Moscow as well, including Vice President Alexander Rutskoy and the Chechen Speaker of the Russian Supreme Soviet, Ruslan Kazbulatov. After the eruption of armed conflict, the Abakaz separatist paramilitary units, along with their political supporters fled to Gudauta from where they obtained significant amount of military and financial aid. In Gudauta, the Russian army base housed and trained Abakaz paramilitary units and provided protection for the leader of the Abakaz separatists, Vladislav Ardzinba. The high level of corruption in the Russian military also contributed in the leakage of Russian arms to both sides. 
From the outset of the hostilities, the Soviets called upon both sides to negotiate and it brokered several ceasefires, which mostly proved ineffective Sokomi offensive was undertaken by the Abakaz side in violation of the previous ceasefire agreement. On the other hand, the Russian military offered protection to the retreating Abakaz detachments during the summer 1992 Georgian offensive. In November 1992, the Russian Air Force conducted heavy air strikes against the villages and towns in Abkhazia predominantly populated by Georgians. In response, the Georgian Defense Ministry accused Russia for the first time in public of preparing a war against Georgia in Abkhazia. This led to the Georgian attacks on targets under Russian and Abakaz control and the retaliation from the Russian forces. The Soviets' attitude began to tilt further to the Abakaz side, after a Russian Mi-8 helicopter reportedly carrying humanitarian aid was brought down by Georgian forces on 27 October, which triggered retaliation from Russian forces. On 14 December 1992, the Russian military suffered the loss of another military helicopter, carrying evacuees from TK Varcheli, resulting in 52 to 64 deaths including 25 children. Although Georgian authorities denied any responsibility, many believed the helicopter was shot down by the Georgian forces. On 16 December, the government of Georgia requested the Russians to evacuate their nationals from Abkhazia via other routes, foremost the Black Sea, but also to limit the number of missions flown from Gudauta, the main Russian air base in the area. However, this incident, "...raised the level of general malevolence in the war and catalyzed more concerted Russian military intervention on the Abakaz side." The town of TK Varcheli had been besieged by Georgian forces and its population mostly Abakaz, Georgians and Russians suffered a severe humanitarian crisis. Russian military helicopters supplied the city with food and medicine and mobilized Russian trained fighters to defend the city, the Human Rights Watch states. Although the Russian government continued to declare itself officially neutral in the war, parts of Russian public opinion and a significant group in the parliament, primarily Russian nationalists, who had never been favorably disposed toward the Georgians, began to tilt toward the Abakaz at least by December. During this period the Abakaz side obtained a large number of armor, tanks T-72 and T-80 and heavy artillery. The question remains whether there were specific orders concerning the transfer of weapons to Abakaz side and if so, whom they were issued by. Russian border guards allowed the Chechen fighters led by Shamil Basayev to cross into Abkhazia or at least did nothing to prevent them from arriving in the conflict zone. The defense minister in the secessionist government and one of the main organizers of the Abakaz armed units was the professional Russian military officer Sultan Sosnaliev from the kabardino balkaria Republic. The most obvious example of Soviet Russian support to the Abakaz side in 1993 was the bombing of Georgian held Sokomi by Russian fighter bombers. The Russian defense minister Pavel Grachev consistently denied it, but after Georgians succeeded in bringing down one Su-27 fighter bomber and UN experts identified the dead pilot as Russian it became irrefutable. Nevertheless, some equipment was turned over to Georgia according to the previous agreements in 1993. Russian General Grachev claimed that Georgian side has painted the aircraft to resemble Russian Air Force aircraft and bombed their own positions, killing hundreds of their own people in Eshira and Sokomi. This statement raised anger and utter contempt among Georgians toward the Russian side. The Russian journalist Dmitry Kolodov, who has witnessed the Russian bombardment of Sokomi, wrote a couple of compiling reports with detailed description of humanitarian catastrophe. The shelling of Sokomi by Russians is the most disgusting thing in this war. All the residents of Sokomi remember the first shelling. It took place on 2 December 1992. The first rocket fell on Peace Street. They struck at crowded places. The next strategic target was the town market, which was hit with great precision. Eighteen people were killed that day. There were always lots of people in the market. Kolodov also reported on the Russian volunteers fighting on the separatist side. Russians, too, are fighting there. We often heard from Georgian guards how Russian mercenaries were attacking, it's a blood-curdling sight, they have helmets and firm, bullet-proof jackets on and their legs are armored as well. They advance with their heads bent down, like robots ready to kill. There is no use shooting at them. No tanks are needed, they are followed by the abakaz behind. 
On 25 February, the Georgian parliament appealed to the UN, European Council and Supreme Council of the Russian Federation demanding the withdrawal of Russian forces from Abkhazia and stating that Russia waged an undeclared war. Against Georgia, Georgian Parliament adopted another resolution on 28 April 1993, which openly blamed Russia in political facilitation of ethnic cleansing and genocide against Georgians. Russian policy during the final battle for Sokhumi in September 1993, immediately, after the breach of the ceasefire by the Abakaz forces, appeared to follow several lines. Russian officials condemned the attack, issued calls to Abakaz forces to cease the offensive and its accompanying human rights violations and reportedly cut off electricity and telephone service to parts of Abkhazia from September to December 1993. Russia also supported resolutions in the Security Council condemning Abakaz forces for breaching the ceasefire. At the same time, the Russian government criticized the Georgian government for refusing, once the attack was underway, to negotiate. As the Human Rights Watch report notes, it is doubtful, however that Russian forces in or near Abkhazia were as surprised as the Russian government seemed to be. Initiating an offensive as large as the one undertaken, in three different directions at once, must have required extensive movement of forces and resupply during the days leading up to it. Russian forces on the Georgian Abakaz border, who were supposed to police the ceasefire, made no attempt to forestall the attack. The Abakaz weapons were stored near the front and were returned to the Abakaz by Russian military mission when hostilities restarted. Adaman Nikolai Pusko, a notable commander of some 1,500 Cossack volunteers fighting against Georgians in Abkhazia, later claimed that his Sotnia was the first to enter Sokhumi. Pusko and two other Cossack Adamans in Abkhazia, Mikhail Vasiliev and Valery Goloborodko, all died in unclear circumstances from 1993 to 1994. In a Time magazine article published on 4 October 1993, Georgians said Russian army officers provided Abkhazian separatists, at the beginning using mere hunting rifles and shotguns, with sophisticated weapons like BM 21 multiple rocket launchers and Suhoi Su 25 jet aircraft, plus battlefield intelligence. Humanitarian actions In the beginning of the conflict August 1992, Russia evacuated many people from Abkhazian resorts by means of Black Sea Fleet and Russian Air Force. As the war progressed Russia began to supply humanitarian aid to both sides, it also brokered numerous agreements concerning the exchange of prisoners of war. In the course of the war, Russian humanitarian efforts were chiefly focused on the town of TK Varcheli, which had large ethnic Russian population and was besieged by the Georgian forces. The landmines installed along the mountain highway to this town made Russian helicopters the only safe means of transportation into it. However, Russian Navy also evacuated tens of thousands of Georgian civilians, after the fall of Gagra October 1992 and Sokhumi September 1993 to the separatist forces. Topic. Results Georgia effectively lost control over Abkhazia and the latter established as a de facto independent territory. The relations between Russia and Abkhazia improved in the late 1990s and the economic blockade of Abkhazia was lifted. The laws were also passed allowing other countries to become part of Russian Federation, which was interpreted by some as an offer to Abkhazia and other unrecognized countries of the former Soviet Union. Georgia claimed that Russian army and intelligence contributed decisively to the Georgian defeat in the Abkhazian War and considered this conflict along with the Georgian Civil War and Georgian Ossetian War as one of Russia's attempt of restoring its influence in the post-Soviet area. At the end of the war, the Russian Foreign Minister Andrei Kozarev said at the UN General Assembly, Russia realizes that no international organization or group of states can replace our peacekeeping efforts in this specific post-Soviet space. A wide array of opinions on Russian policy with respect to Georgia and Abkhazia is expressed in the media and parliament. Leonid Radzahovsky, a political analyst and independent journalist, wrote that gaining new territories is the last thing Russia needs and compared the support of foreign separatists to throwing stones at one's neighbors, while living in the glass house. Oxford professor S.N. McFarlane, notes on the issue of Russian mediation in Abkhazia. 
Notably, it is clear that Russian policy makers are uncomfortable with the idea of a prominent role being granted to external actors in dealing with conflict in the former Soviet space. More recently, this has been extended specifically to the activities of international organizations in the management of conflict. As one group of influential Russian foreign policy commentators and policy makers put it in May 1996, it is definitely not in Russia's interest to see outside mediation and peacekeeping operations on the territory of the former Soviet Union. Russia has clear hegemonic aspirations in the former Soviet space. Although a wide array of opinions is expressed on Russian policy in the newly independent states in the media and in parliament, a dominant consensus appears to have emerged among foreign policy influentials on the need for active presence and influence in the area. Such views have been widely expressed in official statements, influential statements by independent policy groups and by advisers to the president, influential political figures and the president himself. The hegemonic component of Russian policy in the near abroad is evident in its efforts to restore Russian control over the external borders of the former Soviet Union, to reassume control over the Soviet air defense network, to obtain agreements on basing Russian forces in the non-Russian republics and by its obvious sensitivity to external military presences including multilateral ones on the soil of the former Soviet Union. To judge from Russian policy on Caspian Sea and Central Asian energy development, it extends beyond the political, security realm and into the economic one. Its sources are diverse and include the Russian imperial hangover, but more practically the fate of the Russian diaspora, the lack of developed defenses along the borders of the Russian Federation proper, concern over Islam and discomfort with the spill-over effects of instability in the other republics. On 28 August, Senator Richard Lugar, then visiting Georgia's capital Tbilisi, joined the Georgian politicians in criticism of the Russian peacekeeping mission, stating that the U.S. administration supports the Georgian government's insistence on the withdrawal of Russian peacekeepers from the conflict zones in Abkhazia and the Skinvali district. <laughs> conflict mediation. During the war the peace mediation was done first by Russia and second by the UN. From 1993 onwards, the pressure for a peace settlement mounted from UN, Russia and the then Group of Friends of Georgia Russia, US, France, Germany and UK. In December 1993, an official ceasefire was signed by Georgian and Abakaz leaders under the aegis of the UN and with Russia as intermediary. The venues shifted from Geneva to New York and finally to Moscow. On 4 April 1994 the «Declaration on Measures for a Political Settlement of the Georgian-Abkhazian Conflict» was signed in Moscow. Instead of the deployment of a traditional UN peacekeeping force, the deployment of a CIS, mainly Russian peacekeeping forces, was agreed in Moscow on 14 May 1994. In June 1994, CIS peacekeeping forces comprising only the Russian soldiers were deployed along the administrative border between Abkhazia and the remaining Georgia. The UN mission also arrived. However, these could not prevent further atrocities against the Georgians in the following years around 1,500 deaths have been reported by the Georgian government in the post-war period. On 14 September 1994, Abakaz leaders appeared on local TV to demand that all ethnic Georgians depart from the region by 27 September the anniversary of the capture of Sokhumi. On 30 November 1994, Abkhazia promulgated a new constitution declaring independence of the breakaway region. However, none of the foreign governments recognized this. On 15 December 1994, the U.S. State Department condemned Abkhazia's declaration of independence. On 21 March 1995, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees accused Abakaz militias of torturing and murdering dozens of returning ethnic Georgian refugees in Gali district. Despite an official economic blockade imposed on Abkhazia by Russia and CIS in 1995 virtually ended by the Russian government in 1997, the breakaway region has been enjoying both military and economic support by Russia. <laughs> UN involvement 
The United Nations Observer Mission in Georgia was established in 1993 to monitor the ceasefire and later expanded to observe the operation of the CIS peacekeeping forces. The Organization for Security in Europe OSCE and other international organizations are also involved in monitoring developments. Negotiations toward a permanent peace settlement have made little progress, but the Georgian and Abakaz governments have agreed to limit the size of their military forces and extend the authorization for UNOMIG. Meanwhile, Georgian refugees maintain a government in exile. Weapons Both sides during conflict were mainly equipped with Soviet-made weaponry, thought Georgian forces had much more heavy weapons at the start of war, Abakaz forces acquired many advanced weapons from Russia and at the end of war had decisive edge in weaponry, employing many SAM and MANPAT systems, meanwhile Georgian forces had problems with supplying needed weapons and equipment to forces in Abkhazia, mainly because there was no foreign support and difficulties acquiring weapons from abroad. See also Transair Georgia airliner shootdowns Politics of Abkhazia Russian-Circassian War Notes Further reading Chervanaya, Svetlana Mikhailovna. Conflict in the Caucasus, Georgia, Abkhazia and the Russian Shadow. Gothic Image Publications, 1994. Anderson, Andrew. Russia vs. Georgia, One Undeclared War in the Caucasus. Young Experts Think Tank Yet. Blair, Heather. Ethnic Conflict as a Tool of Outside Influence, An Examination of Abkhazia and Kosovo, Young Experts Think Tank Yet. McCallion, Amy. Abkhazian Separatism, Young Experts Think Tank, Yet Lynch, Dov, The Conflict in Abkhazia, Dilemmas in Russian Peacekeeping Policy. Royal Institute of International Affairs, February 1998. McFarlane, S. N., On the Front Lines in the Near Abroad, The CIS and the OSCE in Georgia S. Civil Wars, Third World Quarterly, Vol. 18, No. 3, pp. 509-525, 1997. Marshania L., Tragedy of Abkhazia Moscow, 1996 White Book of Abkhazia, 1992–1993 Documents, Materials, Evidences. Moscow, 1993 Topic external links Accord issue on the Georgia-Abkhazia peace process also includes chronology and key texts and agreements, in English and in Russian http colon slash slash www.cidcm.umd.edu slash mar slash chronology. ASP, group at equals 37201.